In today's list, you'll see all the Marvel Cinematic Universe Phase 4 movies, ranked from worst to best. 7. Thor, Love and Thunder When it was announced, Thor, Love and Thunder, brought a somewhat curious polarization among fans. On the one hand, the Ragnarok haters, who already thought that the film would follow the same joke as the third film. On the other hand, fans who yearned to see the saga of the Butcher of the Gods and Jane Foster's plot adapted for the MCU. Well, the film finally hit theaters in July this year, and it's certainly one of the movies ever made. Here, Taika Waititi returns with a more comedic tone to the God of Thunder franchise, but in a film that fails to anchor its own jokes and looks more like a succession of short events sewn together haphazardly. Although seeing Natalie Portman as the mighty Thor is a reason for joy, the film is a real mess, which does not even know which of its various characters to focus on. Couple that with Christian Bale's wasted talent as gore, and we have definitely the worst of the Phase 4 films. Sixth, Black Widow. Since Scarlett Johansson brought the seductive and lethal spy to life in 2010, in a participation in Iron Man 2, Fans have clamored for a long heroine solo, but they have always been rejected by Marvel Studios, which at the time had a great disdain for their female characters. Ten years have passed and Black Widow has finally hit theaters, remember? Directed by Kate Shortland, the film has a very strong start and bets on the atmosphere of a spy thriller that perfectly matches Natasha Romanoff's entire journey. However, towards the end it becomes the classic spectacle with dodgy visual effects and lame MCU villains, and that's when it completely loses its temper. It's all very nice to see Scarlett Johansson dedicate herself one last time to the role, just as the addition of Yelena Belova becomes a huge highlight in Phase 4. But there's a long way to go before Black Widow is considered a genuinely good movie especially after everything we've seen. With the Infinity Saga, it would have been acceptable if it was released in Phase 1. 5. Spider-Man, Never Go Home Now that we've gone through the phase of collective delirium caused by the scarcity of releases during the pandemic and the weak start of Phase 4, we can admit without fear, Spider-Man, no Return Home even has its intriguing moments, but it's a film that relies on nostalgia to disguise its real problems. On top of all of this is John Watts' direction, which remains listless and lifeless, as with his previous films. However, it goes a little further than that, since the first hour of the film is tedious and only serves to delay what fans really wanted to see, which is the meeting of Tobey Maguire. Andrew Garfield and Tom Holland in theaters. Even though it brings back remarkable villains like Dr. Octopus, Electro, and the Green Goblin, the film does not stand up very well on its own, since it depends all the time on a degree of public attachment to the previous sagas of Buddy Neighborhood. At the very least, it provides a satisfying conclusion to the first Spider-Man trilogy in the MCU. Four Degrees, Shang-Chi, and The Legend of the Ten Rings. In many ways, Phase 4 has become a period of experimentation and new firsts for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. With a good part of the Avengers retired or dead, new heroes could have their own highlight, and Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings proves to be a very interesting work in this regard. Even though the ending strictly follows the MCU formula and becomes just another generic festival of action scenes with unfinished CGI, the feature sustains itself in a very audacious way by being inspired by martial arts films and wuxia classics, such as House of Flying Daggers and Crouching Tiger. Hidden Dragon. In addition, the inclusion of Simu Liu and Aquafina brings more lightness to the franchise, in addition to finally having a strong adaptation of the Mandarin, in the form of Wen Wu. Although it has its slips, it is a feature that is worth a second revisit, especially for expanding the horizons of the MCU without needing connections, references, and Easter eggs at all times. Third, Eternals. Directed by Chloe Zhao, director of Nomadland, Eternals broke a rule that had been in vogue for years in the MCU. It was the first film in the franchise to receive a negative approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes, and to this day, it is alone in that classification. However, there is much about the film that deserves praise. Here, Zhao strays from the tropes and conveniences of Marvel Studios to carve out a very human piece about evolution nature, and the role of gods who have been hiding among humanity for millennia. It is a film full of outstanding characters, which makes room for original and less conventional narratives in a genre that is already reaching the exhaustion phase. Sure, 
It would perhaps benefit from a tighter pace and a less repetitive structure, but still, it's the kind of superhero story that you see less and less often and that brings a breath of fresh air to the saga. From the House of Ideas, hopefully, in a sequel, Zhao can tie up loose ends and deliver an even better final product. 2. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness When it premiered in May of this year, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness divided fandom in an unprecedented way. Many felt uncomfortable with Wanda Maximoff's arc, which contradicts what we saw of the heroine in WandaVision, and also with the false promise of several cameos and special appearances. And you have to agree, the screenplay written by Michael Waldron is not one of the most brilliant. Its text is simplistic and leaves aside all the complexities of the characters immersed in the plot, in addition to following an easy and predictable course. However, Sam Raimi's direction works miracles in what, in the hands of a less competent director, would be just another generic film. Whether through the use of visual effects, the only film that brings good things about it in Phase 4, or the horror content present in every second, we have here one of the most daring and spectacular works of the MCU, which manages to give a new direction for Stephen Strange and still play with the concept of the multiverse even if in a very restrained and bureaucratic way. 1. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever After If we analyze it coldly, the truth is that all Phase 4 films have glaring problems, whether in the narrative structure, in the look or even in their fitting with the rest of the MCU. The recently released Black Panther, Wakanda Forever After is no exception to the rule, but it's surprising to see the degree of commitment and dedication from the crew and cast. Although it's almost three hours way on the final product, Ryan Coogler's film exceeds expectations by touching on themes such as grief and anger, in addition to offering a new geopolitical conflict full of nuances. Much of this is in the weight cast, with emphasis on Tena Cuerda, Angela Bassett, and even Letitia Wright who surprises in her interpretation of Shuri. The beautiful tribute to the legacy of Chadwick Boseman does not go unnoticed, and it is precisely when the film explores the impact left by Chala that we have some of the best moments in a superhero film of the year. And although its narrative is messy and its resolution is not very satisfying, it is a very touching outcome for this transitional phase of the MCU.